Imagine driving through a tunnel deep under the Atlantic Ocean and suddenly coming upon a roundabout. Sounds like science fiction. It's the reality on the Faroe Islands. This remote archipelago of just 50,000 people is home to one of the world's most ambitious and hidden infrastructure projects in the world, featuring an undersea roundabout 72 meters below the Atlantic Ocean. You might be thinking, an underwater roundabout? Why did they build that? Why? This engineering marvel is part of the Asteroid Tunnel, an 11.2 kilometers undersea passage connecting the islands of Stramoy and Eisteroy. And today, we will explain why the Faroe Islanders built it and what impact this new tunnel system has, because it is not just one tunnel. And why a nation of only 50,000 people puts so much money into building this mega project. And the best part is, it's all built in a fantastic landscape. The Faroe Islands are a breathtaking place with rugged cliffs towering over the Atlantic, green valleys dotted with colorful houses, and fjords cutting through the landscape. Faroe Connected, the purpose behind the project. You might be wondering, why would a tiny archipelago of just 50,000 people need such an ambitious infrastructure project? Well, imagine if you're trying to get to work, but instead of hopping in your car, you have to check the ferry schedule, hope the sea is calm, and then spend over an hour on a boat. Not exactly the most efficient way to start your day, right? This is where the Eisteroy Tunnel comes in, transforming a one-hour-plus journey between Torshavn and Runavik into a breezy 16-minute drive. The Faroe Islands are a jigsaw puzzle of 18 major islands, separated by narrow sounds and deep fjords. This rugged landscape, while stunningly beautiful, presents some serious transportation challenges. Before the tunnels, getting from one island to another often meant long, unpredictable ferry rides. That's why they love tunnels. In total, there are 22 car tunnels, including four underwater tunnels with a total length of 68 kilometers. Before the underwater tunnels opened, the Faroe Island had a total of 18 mountain tunnels. The oldest tunnel was excavated in 1963 on the island of Suduroi and is almost 1,500 meters long. While most of these mountain tunnels are two-lane, some tunnels come with only a single track. There are several laybys in these tunnels in order for oncoming traffic to pass by. To drive these tunnels yourself, you have to be a skilled driver. I think these tunnels would give me stress. I would rather drive under the water. The four latest tunnels are underwater tunnels at two lanes wide and with lanterns. The four underwater tunnels are the Sandoya Tunnel, 10.8 kilometers long, opened in 2023. It links Sandoy and Stramoy, opening up easier access to Sandoy from the main islands. The Nordoya Tunnel, 6.2 kilometers long, opened in 2006, provides a direct route between Asteroy and the northern island of Bordeaux. The Varga Tunnel, 4.9 kilometers long, opened in 2002, connects Stramoy and Varga, significantly shortening the travel time to Varga Airport. And the Asteroya Tunnel, 11.4 kilometers long, opened in 2020, connects Stramoy and Eisteroy, featuring the world's first roundabout beneath the Atlantic Ocean. And then there is a proposal to build the fifth underwater tunnel, the Suduroy Tunnel, a 24-kilometer tunnel to connect the mainland to the southernmost island, Suduroy. The Faroes government will likely give the green light on what might possibly be its final subsea project. I would like to apologize to the people from Faroe Island if I am pronouncing the names of the tunnels wrong, which I probably am. Please add in the comments how bad it is. But let's take a moment to appreciate the breathtaking backdrop. 
The Faroe Islands are a feast for the eyes, with their emerald green hills cascading into the deep blue Atlantic. Colorful wooden houses cling to cliffs, while sheep graze peacefully on impossibly steep slopes. Now back to the tunnel. The main goals of this mega project are pretty straightforward. One, tackle those pesky transportation challenges. Two, improve access to essential services. And three, give the local economy a boost. This network of tunnels is set to revolutionize life on the Faroe Islands. Over 90% of the population will be connected by road, which is a game changer for both social and economic integration. Imagine how the life of everybody is changing dramatically. They are going from island hopping to island driving. It's like the Faroe Islands are getting their very own version of the German Autobahn, just with more sheep and fewer BMWs. This project isn't just about convenience. It's about connecting communities. Before the tunnels, accessing essential services could be a real challenge. Need to see a doctor? Hope the ferry's running? Want to catch a movie? Better check the weather forecast first. The tunnel network is changing all that, bringing the islands closer together in more ways than one. Three, engineering marvels, how they built it. You might be wondering, how on earth did they build a tunnel under the sea? Well, buckle up, because we're about to take a deep dive into the engineering marvels of the Faroe Islands. You might think building a tunnel under the sea involves some high-tech, futuristic methods in 2024. But here's the kicker. They used a technique that's been around since the 1800s. It's called the drill and blast method, and it's about as subtle as it sounds. Step one, drilling. Drill holes are made in the rock face according to a specified pattern. Step two, charging. Fill the drilled holes with explosives. Step three, blasting. Detonate the explosives to break the rock. Step four, mucking. Remove the broken rock, muck, from the tunnel. Step five, support. Install support systems like rock bolts or shotcrete to stabilize the tunnel. And then you go back to step one, the drilling, until you reach the end. But building a tunnel under the sea isn't just a matter of blasting away. There are some pretty gnarly challenges to contend with. For one, there's the constant threat of water inflow. You don't want an undersea tunnel to turn into an aquarium. As Taitua Samuelson, CEO of the operating company for the tunnels put it, it was actually the planning, the geological surveys you had to do before to be sure you didn't come up to the sea bottom on your way over the fjord. In other words, they had to make sure they didn't accidentally punch a hole in the seabed. That would have been a bit more than a small leak. After every 100 meters of blasting and digging, they don't just leave the tunnel walls bare. They immediately covered the walls with a layer of concrete to ensure stability and make the structure watertight by using shotcrete. That's concrete sprayed at high velocity for all you non-engineer types. And just in case any water does decide to crash the party, they installed a complex system of pumps and pipes. Rainwater or seawater that ends up in the tunnel is immediately pumped out. Hopefully, we don't have to use that pump at 190 meters below sea level. The whole construction process took about four years, two and a half years for the drilling and blasting phase, and then another year and a half for all the finishing touches like electrical and safety systems. And remember that undersea roundabout we mentioned earlier? That is where the three tunnels come together and it's located 72.6 meters underwater. Try explaining that to your GPS, so they couldn't use their standard GPS tools. So 
So the next time you're stuck in traffic, just remember, somewhere out there, under the waves of the North Atlantic, people are driving through a roundabout at the bottom of the sea. And that's pretty cool. Four, life-changing infrastructure. Impact on daily life in the Faroe Islands. Imagine waking up one day to find that your hour-long commute has shrunk to just 16 minutes. That's exactly what happened for many Faroes when the Asteroid Tunnel opened. It's like someone hit the fast-forward button on their daily routines. Suddenly, the islands feel a lot smaller and a lot more connected. One of the most significant impacts is on healthcare access. Previously, pregnant women had to travel to Torshavn two weeks before their due date to ensure they were close to medical services. Can you imagine the stress that puts on families? Now, with the new infrastructure, these soon-to-be parents can breathe a little easier knowing that help is just a short drive away. As they don't have to live in the hospital hotel for two weeks prior to the birth, the economic impact is equally impressive, with over 90% of the Faroes population now connected by road, local businesses are seeing new opportunities. It's like someone pressed the connect button on the island's economy. Tourism is getting a boost too. After all, who wouldn't want to drive through an underwater roundabout? Speaking of impressive numbers, let's talk about property values. On the Aesteroy side, house prices increased by 31% between 2019 and 2020. Thank you, Tunnel. Five, the price of progress, costs and funding. Now let's talk numbers as tunnels aren't cheap. The first number is 180 million euro. That's the price tag for the Asteroid Tunnel alone. To put that in perspective, it's about 3,600 euros for every man, woman and child in the Faroe Islands. You might be wondering, how does a small island nation fund such a massive project? Well, they got creative and came up with a quite smart idea. Modern problems require modern solutions. The government established a limited company which they own and injected 50 million euros over a 10-year period. But that was just for the start. They also secured loans from Faroese, UK-based and mainly American pension funds. It's like they're building a tunnel to the future and asking retirees to help pave the way. But it is the setup where it gets interesting. The total loans for this project are expected to be paid back by 2040. That's a 16-year repayment period. All are paid by the toll of the users of the tunnel. The second number is 485 million euro. That is the price tag for all 22 tunnels. But here's a fact that might make you do a double take. The cost per head for this tunnel investment comes to over $15,000 for each person on the islands. Compare that to the $1,000 per resident funded for infrastructure projects in most US states due to the bipartisan infrastructure law. And you see that the Faroese are really putting their money where their tunnel is. That's a lot of cash for a small island nation. And you'd be right. But the Faroes are playing the long game. This investment is crucial for the island's economy which currently relies heavily on fishing, which is 90% of their exports. The hope is that increased connectivity will help diversify the economy and boost tourism. It's like they're casting a wide net for future economic opportunities. And it's not just about the money. The Asteroid Tunnel has already made a big splash in daily life, dramatically reducing travel times between islands. This is expected to have ripple effects throughout the economy, increasing access to services and stimulating local businesses. So the next time you're stuck in traffic, just remember, somewhere out there, the Faroese are driving in a tunnel that costs more per person than most countries spend on their entire infrastructure in their country. Now that's what we call prioritization.
Six, Beyond Tunnels, Sustainability at Faroe. If you're feeling overwhelmed by the sheer scale of the Faroe Islands Tunnel Project, take a deep breath. The islanders aren't stopping there. They're setting their sights on an even more ambitious goal, powering their entire nation with green energy by 2030. These remote islands are aiming to become a global role model for sustainable energy practices. But let's not get ahead of ourselves. The Faroe Islands are already making significant strides in renewable energy. In 2023, they hit a milestone. More than half of their electricity came from renewable sources. But perhaps the most exciting development is the trial of the world's first utility-scale tidal dragon. No, it's not a mythical sea creature. It's a new technology designed to harness the power of tides for electricity generation. Imagine a mechanical sea serpent undulating beneath the waves, turning the ocean's power into clean energy. It's the stuff of eco-friendly science fiction, except it's happening right now in the Faroe Islands. As Turgi Nielsen, head of R plus D at SEV, the local energy company, puts it, all electricity generation onshore will be green by 2030. As a small society, we think that we are able to do so and maybe play a role model for the whole world becoming 100% green. It's a bold vision, but if anyone can pull it off, it's the people who built a roundabout under the sea. Another country that is changing the sustainability world is Tibet. Tibet just opened the largest high-altitude wind farm in the Himalayas. As the air pressure is low, they face other challenges. Check out the video we made about the seven mega-projects China is building in 2024.